Hello and welcome back once again to the Single Mort Review. We've got another Kill Omen for you here. Mm. Uh, the uh, third one that we have featured on the channel. And actually there's a bit of a, a link here to one of our very earliest videos, which yeah. Dave, will, Dave will explain. Yeah, it's Lee Kill Omen, one of the newer Isla distilleries. And in fact, one of our very first videos, way back I believe in video number three, mm -hmm. well over three years ago, in the early days of 2015, was it? Oh, Probably. More or less, more yeah. or less. We looked at a Ruby Port matured Kill Omen. One that's been bonged into ruby cork casks, been bottled after barely three years. Now here we are, back in 2018, and it is another exclusively ruby port matured kill omen. Mm. Bottled, in this case, after at most four years. This one was distilled in 2014, bottled uh, quite recently, 2018, in, what do we tell us? Spring of 2018. Which would have been in the first third of the year. I suppose right? yeah. spring is a bit mm. subjective as to where you yes. are. But um, mm. this one, interesting, uh, we've, we've pre-poured this because this was yep. a fresh open. We're going to give it a bit this one just today, so we need to give it some air just to do it justice. Um, the thing to take note of here is that this is port matured, mm. not port finished. No. And that is exceptionally, exceptionally rare. Yeah. Um, port wood is some of the most active wood mm. you can put your whiskey in. And as such, it is... Almost never ever used for full maturations. Um, that'll be also the reason, well, one, Kiloman bottles young, it always has, and it, well, if it keeps selling the whiskey like they do, they will mm. always bottle young because they simply won't have time to yeah. store any up. Um, for a fully matured port mm. whiskey, uh, it would probably start to go off the rails fairly quickly after sort of certainly under 10 years. Yeah. So um, we'll expect quite a lot of go, even though it's only four years here. Hey, I'm a simple man. I see port maturation. I want to dry. Mm. Um, I'll just show you the... Mm. Hopefully it shows up. Port matured whiskey, even port finished yeah. whiskey, has this most beautiful... It has a coppery reddish pink hue to it, which... Yeah, it's like this rosewood colour. Yeah, and it's a rosé of whiskies. It's really quite lovely. Mm. There, it can cater on two forms. In the finished form, it can be more of like a... more of a tint, and mm. that always makes me a bit suspicious. I am... Dave is a fond of all things port. Mm. Um, we should probably just taste a port one day. <laughs> um, that could be quite fascinating on its own, but um, I am a bit cautious of it because port mm. normally manifests in finishes and I'm a bit yeah. of a humbug when it comes to finishes because I often think they are mm, they're often they're not finished for long enough and there's like painting a veneer mm. over a whiskey that maybe wasn't interesting enough in the first place and that's why it got the finish whereas so yeah. I think a tawny port finish can just add layers of glorious luscious mm. depth and complexity to the flavor of an already good mature whiskey but a port cask maturation yeah. so it goes in there at birth it spends mm. its whole life in that port wood that's a very different mm. thing um those i'm really rather fond of mm. so we'll expect pretty good things in this case this one. ruby port which i believe you explained means that the port has spent less time in the barrel yeah a ruby port is just well it's port that has been Vatted, done a little bit of maturation in oak, normally mm. a big, big, big vat, um, and then has been bottled. So right. it's sort of it's been in the wood long enough to throw its sediment. Mm. Um, otherwise, it would act like vintage port, and you'd get sort of half an inch of um, goobies uh, on the bottom of the bottle. Tawny um, port mature. Whereas tawny port goes into pipes and then will often have a mm. year on it because it spends years and years and years in the in the wood. So. Mm. Not much of a difference involved for if you're then putting, yeah. you know, when you're dealing with reused wood, whether it used to be uh, ruby or mm. tawny, who knows. Um, Interestingly here, though, hogsheads. They, yeah. they have made, this is one of 10,000 bottles, bottled from a vatting of 30 uh, ruby port hogsheads. Yeah. Portwood hogsheads are possibly some of the most rarest casks mm. in Scotland whiskey industry. They are... Because port pipes, which is the common port wood, that's what vintage mm. port, um, not vintage port, but uh, toy port matures, port pipes are really, very really small. They can be, a strong man can heave one over the shoulder and carry it around, mm. and that's kind of what they were, what they were designed um, to be used for. And um, you don't get, it would be very, very annoying to build a hogshead out of that, because hogsheads are bigger everywhere, so you'd have to almost... Break down just, two or three port pipes. It would be like the staves wouldn't even be long mm. enough. You'd have to be gluing bits of wood together. That's um, an esoteric cooperage. Yeah, tawny port is aged and vatted in 
huge, more like you know, punching sized, uh, at least butt sized things. So they would be much easier to build hoggies out of because um, there's big, big long staves. So that's probably mm. why they've specified um, ruby as opposed to mm. tawny, but all speculation really. Yeah. Anyway, enough of this who. Yes. Um, let's have a look at the whiskey involved, oh, which yeah. we shouldn't have to even Bobby, say. It, 50% yeah. unfiltered, uncoloured, because that's what Kilomen do. do. Mm. Ooh, and it? it's also unmistakable on the nose. You can age Kilomen, you can age it, you can make it banana flavour, mm. it doesn't matter. You will always, it's always unmistakably Kilomen. Like so many Isla whiskies, they're just very, very expressive mm. as to what distillery they come from. It's like an express courier, knocks on your door, hello, I'm from Kilomen, here is your Pete. Yeah, buckle it up. It delivers. Um, mm. So there's there's that first and foremost. Yeah. Any, the port might not have much of a chance oh. until we add water, but we'll see if we can detect it. There are some, oh, there is some a hint of wine. There is some sweeter red fruit seen out there. It's low-key, it's in the background thanks to a peat mm. and the relatively young maturation, but it's there. I think the red fruit is how it's mostly manifesting, mm. and that's what the bottle would like to tell us. Red fruit's light citrus. And um, red currants in particular. The cinnamon and creamy sweetness, I'm not quite... I'm getting sweetness. Yeah. It's more of a... It's more juicy to mm. me than necessarily creamy. It's quite fresh, yeah. but... The, um, mm. oh, the peatiness is manifesting as kind of a... If you ever smoked a rather old, old cigar, then there's that sort of a, a dry, ashy tobacco to it, which is tinging that peat. Mm. Right, now, I think the last, the last Ruby Port... Kilomen we tried, uh, this one's predecessor, it's spiritual predecessor, we might say, um, we found it slightly immature. It was a little bit too young, mm. we thought. Uh, whereas yeah. this one is a little bit older, possibly a few months, maybe a year. But I'm thinking, it looks darker. I think it's going to make a difference. I think this one will be much more complete. Uh, yeah. For reference, our scores for that one was, a, I gave it a 7.5. Out of 10, and I must say. Out of 10. This is, this is our primordial... Yeah. Um, well, that's good. That's a good get, <laughs> actually. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Um, and uh, Dave gave it between, seven and, between eight. a 7 and 8. So we'll call that yes. an even 75. Yeah. Um, that, that was a very different scoring so system. Right this was in the mere nascency of this channel and we're still just finding mm. our feet in terms of and you could say, scoring system. And you could say we tended to mark fairly hard back in yeah. those days because we didn't quite have the... Um, we weren't quite replete with mm. the perspective that we are today. I say, so, yeah. um, either it's, way, I think this is going to be a better whiskey regardless. Oh yeah. So let's jump in at the full 50% and see, oh what, yes. see how it takes us. Oh, that is good. That is, for a 50%, very young, very heavily peated whiskey, that is smooth and easy to drink. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? Mm. I'm not sure I would go all the way and call it smooth. Compared I don't think... all things considered, mm. it's, it's smooth and one, one would end. I'll give you this. It's smooth for a kilomen. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, mm. that's really pretty nice. Yeah. There is a acidity to that. Mm. There's a mouth-watering quality, which is absolutely huge. Yeah. There's an acidic juice to this. Which there is a lingering prickle across the incredible. entire tongue and up your cheeks after a draw on this fella. Mm. If I can return to our previous analogy, it is like taking a bit of a draw on a rather fusty old cigar. I'm not a habitual smoker or anything. I have maybe one cigar every two years, just I don't know, for the lulls, one might say. But this is quite evocative of that. However, aside from the smokiness, that really vibrant, really expressive peat, there is also fruitiness. There is port. There is a lot of wood influence happening, um, despite the young age of the whiskey. There are sweet fruits. There are some gentle spices. Yeah, there's some, there's some mm. very... That's almost a... Almost like a fresh cranberry. Mm. Um, very yeah. sort of... Uh, slightly sweet, but mostly... Uh, not quite sour, but mm. acid. Acid and fresh and zingy. And um, a thread of a strong syrupy fruitiness there too. Yeah. There's there's a lot of there's a whininess to this. Mm. And it's not whiny like port, which is not, not really like any other wine. Port's very, very sweet. Um it's almost like a almost like a, a roan red, almost like a um like a Syrah. Or, yeah, I was thinking of it like a, a Syrah or like Shiraz. A very, a very ripe well, sure, they're Australian. Oh, um, okay. still we keep it pure in New Zealand. Mm. Um, just occasionally, on a very warm year, you'll get mm. a, you'll get a Syrah, you know, a Hermitage or 
um, coat their own, uh, and it will be, you know, get up, get it up around 40% ABV, that's how you know you've had a good warm year over there in the old country, and that'll produce a really, really richly berry fruit, and ideally, ideally if it's a really good one, um, it'll have that lifted acidity to go along with mm. it and freshen it up, and it's, this has both of these things. It's a very whiny whiskey, which I'm is And getting a lot of the, the red currants, which I mentioned, but also mm. have a, the plums cherries and grapes you'd expect from a rich, robust red wine, but also the bite of the tannins from similarly a, um, a very robust uh, Shiraz. Yeah, there's a, yeah, a hell of a lot going on. Yeah, this is we'll a, see if we can tease them more out, mm. or at least make it a little more, uh, slow things down a wee bit, because this yeah. is like going down a hydra slide of flavour here, oh, yeah. it's all going past far too quickly to really get a grip. In the past, I would have been critical of this being too peaty for its own good, and it would have thought that had subsumed a lot of the other deeper characters. But now, as a more experienced taster of this sort of whiskey, having done this for a while, um, yeah, I think you more learn, of the one, one learns to sort of put the peat in its own compartment mm. because, of course, it varies from whiskey to whiskey, from producer yeah. to producer, but it is always in the same kind of spectra of mm. peaty flavours, and those can be kind of sectioned off and put away. To one corner of the um, one corner of the brain, while you kind of get to work on mm. the other flavours that might be there. And I think here the scales are very evenly balanced between the peat and the other characters too. They're evening out, so you can taste them both and compartmentalise them and see just what they like together and separately. Mm. Oh yeah, and the addition of water has smothered a lot of the peat. It's now quite an ashy. Or wood smoky it's sort of, it's put the peat out. It's no longer yeah. on fire. It's more of a charry, ashy, mm. particularly, as you said, peat. Yeah. Um, that's what sort of comes, tends to happen. It's been doused. Strawberry jam, cranberries, currants. Mm. There's a lot of fruit there. It's not an outlandishly sweet whiskey. Obviously, the peat is just way mm. too strong for it to be called sweet, but... The fruity flavours which are there have a certain uh, degree of sweetness to them. It's less sweetness mm. and more ripeness yeah. um, is what it brings to mind. Uh, it's very, very, it's a, it's a pungent whiskey. Mm. If you stripped away the peat, this would be a real fruit nectar of a whiskey. This would be bizarre, honestly. It would be really strange. Mm. I mean, as much as it would be fascinating to try an unpeated mm. kilometre, it might be many years before they um, let us away with, with mm -hmm. that one. Um, the, the peat is such a um, such a core component yeah. of the whiskey that they make. Uh, they might even have to age it for something outrageous like 10 years for it to stand on its own as a um, as an unpeated one. And that's not really their modus operandi over there in Kiloman. Um They distill it, they sell it, and they distill it again. Yeah. Um, and all the more power to them, they make mm. some fine, was, fine whiskey. Yeah, it tends to a um, tasting decision led by Anthony Wills of Kiloman, one of the, yeah, the founder, uh, some years ago. And he was you know, up front that their bottling philosophy is they'll bottle what they think is going to taste right rather mm. than catering to a particular what well, wanting to put a particular number on the bottle. So if it's a, of a young age and they think it's right for what they want to deliver, then that's what yeah. they'll do. This is, if we haven't made it clear, this is a stunner. This is, is a real stunner yeah. of a whiskey. And it's one of the best ones I've tasted this year, I think. Yeah. It's really, really, really very good. And it's rare as well. It's mm. rare in terms of its type. Uh, both peated and port matured. It's too uncommon elements mm. sort of mashed together and the result is really quite remarkably yeah. good. Port gives you outlandishly strong layered flavours in a short space of time which is why you mainly see it for finishes. So using it for full maturation you're taking a bit of a gamble but balancing it with a heavy dose of peat means you'll get something which is yeah. you know, more drinkable more readily with less of a risk of it just exploding into a woody nightmare after more than a few years. Mm. This is this is really going to get up there scores wise. Mm. This is this is coming up into the almost on the shelf of really quite profoundly good whiskies, yeah. of which we would maybe end up with, if we were quite lucky, maybe five a year, and that's probably being generous. Um, this is ninety three for me. Mm. This is stellar, stellar whiskey. What do you think? Yeah, Kilomen have outdone themselves here. This is everything that stood for us as a distillery in terms of their bottling and their sort of philosophy for how mm. they select and blend their whiskey, not there's any blending going on here, um, and it is 92 from me. Yeah, it's really, really good stuff. Mm. Um, luckily for all you prospective buyers out there, if you want some of this, you can probably get it, yeah. because this is new on the market as of very, very recently. Mm. Uh, this is pretty much just out, and the price, yeah. having a look at it this afternoon, does seem to vary wildly. Mm. It sounds like we got a pretty good deal on it, but um, 
those paying in pounds or euros might have to pay a wee bit more, and it is a wee bit more than most Kilomen, but mm. considering the um, wood that went in... Um, the be, uniqueness and the quality, it's worth yeah. the extra couple of euros. So if you're yeah. at all a fan of either Kilomen, peated whiskey, port, or ideally all mm. three... Um, which is something really which is, will defy your expectations yeah. and slightly blow your, blow your mind... This is definitely one to watch and one to seek out. Uh, yeah. Definitely a, a super recommendation from, I think, both mm. of us here. And our scores, I think, reflect that. So, yeah, no, it's um, it's hugely surprising. Well, it's sort of surprising. Kiloman, I don't think I've ever tasted a bad whiskey from Kiloman. Mm. They really, they're one of these craft distillers which started with a vision of, you know, making the best whiskey they can, um, which is easy to do if you're not pumping it out for blends. You know, it's mm. a very, very different philosophy they're, they're working towards. And so all, all of their whiskeys are very, very good. Uh, yeah. This one is better than most. Oh, I'll yeah. say that easily. This one really does stand up mm. amongst the um, Kiloman. In terms of young, heavily peated whiskey, this is some of the youngest and most heavily peated. But mm. in this case, it's, it's it, it works on both fronts. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're at all, at all a fan of those things, probably jump on it because mm. this will... Dry up pretty fast, yeah, and then probably, were, probably depressingly, appear on the secondary market yeah. mm. in about a year's time. There were ten thousand bottles. Now there are at most nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, thanks to us. Yeah, probably far, far fewer. So yeah, if you're at all interested or even curious, then go for it while mm. it's still out there. Anyway, that's enough from us. Mm. Um, that was a just a stunning climb in there. Glad we happened upon mm. that one. I'll look forward to revisiting that on our um, personal time mm. sometime later on. Anyway. Um, that's it from us this weekend Slanger we'll catch you back very very soon so stay safe out there Um, drink only the best or the worst whatever (laughs) takes you really and um, as long as you're consistent Slanger we'll be right back